Hello, everyone. Welcome to part one of a four part series of Excel. My name is Kevin Ruppel. I'm an information librarian here at South Brunswick Public Library. And here today, I'm going to show you just the basics of Excel. Um, and then we're going to roll up to just getting you kind of used to how to use it, go through some functions, some abilities we could do with this. And today, we're going to be using Office 365's version of Excel. And more importantly, we're going to be using the free version of Office 365's Excel. There are some functionalities that aren't in the free version, but what we're going to be doing today and through this whole series is everything you could do with the free version. So the first part is the basics. The second part is going to be advanced formulas. Part three is going to be on charts. And then part four is going to be about pivot tables. Um, so there's a lot of things we're going to cover. And on a biweekly basis, we're going to be having those series. Um, this is the recording of it. And we're going to post this onto YouTube for everyone to kind of watch for a later date and to reference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start off by showing how to get to the free version of Office 365. So what we're gonna do is sit here with Google, we're gonna type in Office, we're gonna type in Office 365. And then if you were to check right up here, we see that we have Office 365 login. And just make sure it is this URL, the HTTPS www.office.com. And then we could go ahead and click on that. And this will take you to this page. Now, if you don't, if you're on a computer like I am now, where I'm not signed into anything Microsoft related, um, you'll have this thing where it says, welcome to Office. You can sign in, get Office, or you can sign up for the free version. Sign for the free version means that if you don't have a Microsoft account, um, whether it's like a Hotmail account or just a general Office account or Microsoft account, um, you could then kind of make your email be usable on Office. So if you have a Gmail account, a Verizon account, you could click on sign up for the free version of Office, input your email address, a password, and should get you along the way. Um, since we, what we're going to be using right now is a Gmail account to access it that I've already set up with Office. I'm just going to click on sign in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to jump cut to the sign in part if you're watching this as a recording. So once you're logged in, you'll notice that this is now what it will look like. This is just the Office page. It reminds you a lot if you go to Google Drive, it's really about the same. On the left-hand side is gonna be a bunch of different icons for the different products of Microsoft. Um, the first three are gonna be your online office suite. So you have Word, you have Excel, and then you have PowerPoint. Um, you could use all these things. It's just gonna be limited in some of the more advanced features, but for most day-to-day -day operations, it should house as much as you really truly need. Um, the thing that is with this product by being the free version is you can only access it online. So if you can only access this, if you have an online connection, if you have an internet connection running, if you're offline, you won't be able to access this stuff. Additionally, all the things you'll be using, um, let's say if you make a Word document, it's gonna be saved to OneDrive. And OneDrive is the Microsoft equivalent of Google Drive. Um, so it'll always be housed there. And just like with Google Drive, you can pull that data back out. Um, and I'll show you how to export at the end of the session. So today we're just going to look at Excel. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Excel. And then this will look exactly like you open up Google Sheets where on the top, you will see a bunch of templates here. And then on the bottom section, you could upload Excel files that you have and just open them. Um, it just takes some time for it to kind of be uploaded to OneDrive and then you can open it and get to work. Or um, if you look over here, where it says recent, these are gonna be the most recently used ones. So it's a nice little quick feature. Today, we're gonna to click on new blank workbook because we're gonna start off fresh to kind of get used to everything. Uh, and as I mentioned before, right there, new workbooks are saved to OneDrive. 
Um, so it's always going to be saved there. So I'm just kind of keeping that in mind. So let's click on New Blink Workbook. And here we'll get to an Excel that kind of looks like how it was back in the old days, but it's a little different. Um, so just kind of keep this in mind that this is the top ribbon bar. We're used to old Excels. And then this is the old school Excel kind of spreadsheet thing going on here. Um, some changes because we are on the online version um, is up here is going to be the name of the file working on and where it is and where it's been saved to. Um, so what we're going to do now is just rename this and just name this as demo because it's a demonstration. So I'm going to just double click there, type in demo, and then press enter. And now we can see over there that the file name is now demo and it's saved to OneDrive. Anytime we edit, it's going to automatically save to OneDrive. So it will always save no matter what we do. A couple of other things that are a little bit different here. Um, there's a search bar. This is if you have any help questions, you could just type it in there and Excel will send you out to a thing, usually uh, a piece of, um, they'll send you out to some literature so you can understand whatever the question you have. Over here is since we are on an online platform, you're gonna have share and comments. Um, Sharing is if you want to share the file to have co-collaborators, you click on that and then send up the emails. And then comments is if people were to put comments in, you kind of see them running along. And then finally over here is editing. Um, this just means what kind of form you are at the moment. So you can either be editing or viewing. Um, when you do share, you could set if they are allowed to edit or not. And then you can also set an expiration date. Um, so there's small things you could do to do that. You could also just copy the link and send it. So if you are just working on email and you just want to send an email blast real fast the, the file you want to work on with a bunch of people, you could do it through that way as well. Wonderful. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the real basics on <laughs> what is Excel. So with Excel, you are going to have rows and columns. Uh, rows and columns are gonna build up your database. So you have your columns here running alphabetically with A, B, C, D. And then you have your rows being denoted by numbers one, two, three, four. When you set up your database or anything in Excel, you wanna make your columns to be descriptors of whatever you're entering and then your rows to be the thing we're talking about. To kind of put it in a much better term, the rows are going to be your entity. So everything that you're going to be cataloging is an entity. So if we're doing people, if we're just looking at a database of people's addresses, let's say, we're going to have the people themselves as the entity and they're going to be filled out in the row. And then the columns are going to be descriptives of the entity or just kind of describe them. So just kind of show up what that means. In A, the row A, I'm going to put down name meaning I want to get the name of the entity. In row B, I want to get maybe their address, right? And then maybe in row C, I want their phone number. So I'm going to type in phone number. And notice as I'm typing, um, it shows up here in the cell and then up here in the function. Um, this is useful because some, if you want to do edits, I'd recommend just clicking on a cell and click on the function and changing it there. It's a lot of it, it's a little bit easier because things go kind of awry sometimes if you just click on a cell and then edit, or if you click on it and start typing, you could just delete the cell. So try to, if you're editing things, just click on the cell, click on the function and just change what you got here. All right. Um, and then the last one, I'm just put phone number and I'm just gonna put zip code. So I'm just gonna put the word zip and press enter. Notice here with row C and D, uh, C kind of gets cut off and D is fine. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we can see all this data. There's two ways to do it. The first way is if you take your mouse and you get to the middle of these two, C and D, it will change into an arrow with a line down it. You can then click on it and drag it. 
to manually move it around. Or what you could do is you could just double click it instead instead of dragging and it will auto fill out, which makes things a bit easier. So now that I have the name, the address, the phone number, and the zip, I could then start just filling this out. So I'm just gonna have Bob here being enter as the name. The address is gonna be 11 Highland Avenue. Um, and notice if you press tab, you're gonna go across the row. If you press enter, it goes down the column. So if I hit tab, I go from address to phone book, phone number. If I press enter, I go from row one to row three. So phone number, I'm just gonna slam a bunch of numbers together. <laughs> so perfect, hit tab, up to the zip, and I'm gonna put a zip code in there. Cool hit enter. So that way we could, that shows out how we could just fill out information. Notice Highland Ave is kind of cut off, so I could just double click and it will auto format. Um, next, I'm going to add Mary. She is going to be on 9 Lane, Lane right? Going to hit tab. And I just want to show something interesting with numbers. Um, so I'm going to type in a bunch of numbers, a lot more than a normal phone number would be, just to kind of show what would happen. So here we see that the numbers are in scientific notation, right? 6.78 to the exponent 26. Um, sometimes you don't want that to happen. Um, sometimes let's say we're just doing, we have a barcode and we want to see the whole barcode. We don't want to see it as a scientific notation number. To change this, you would click on up here where it says general. Um, so what we're gonna do is click up here for general. And then we're going to click down and we can change this. So since we're just looking at it as a straight number, we just want it as a number, we click on number. And notice it all fills up with these hashes. Um, what that means now is that what you have in there is a number, but the number is so long, it's not gonna show up. So you could do in two ways. You could click and drag manually or double click. Um, I'm just gonna click and drag manually and we can see that here we go. We have all the numbers here. Um, what we could then do is notice the number has the decimal place. We could change that decimal place. So it's not always there. Um, so what we could do is we could use these two things. Um, this first button is gonna add or increase the decimal place. The second one's gonna decrease or take away these decimal places. So I want to click on the decrease button twice. And here we go. We don't have the decimal place anymore. Right. And I could just kind of continue on my way of filling out this data now. Wonderful. So the next thing we're going to talk about is sometimes you just. So the next thing we want to talk about is adding more sheets. Um, it's always important to kind of make sure whatever thing you're doing is going to be non-data destructive. So try not to delete things you may need later on. Um, and since data and space is really cheap nowadays, um, just kind of be a bit of a data hoarder and just kind of keep it all. So to do this, I will show you on the bottom here. You see that there is this three line thing, or as they call a hamburger button, you have a sheet one and you have the plus arrow. If you press the hamburger button, it will give you a list of all the sheets you have if you have like a jillion of them. But for now, we just have sheet one. And then we have a plus sign. Um, so we click on the plus sign, we add another sheet. So now we have sheet one and sheet two. Sometimes you kind of give order to all this, we could kind of rename these things. So if I double click on sheet one, it will say rename sheet two. I could rename this to people because it's just a list of people. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And there I have my people tab. Now I have people tab and sheet two. So I'm gonna double click sheet two and I'm gonna call it numbers. 
because we're gonna just kind of go over some numbers, some calculations you could do in Excel to kind of make things easier. So some things you can do with Excel is with numbers. Um, number one is you could have to just kind of type in your numbers, right? And you could do type one, two, three, if you want to do it that way. But once you have a sequence going like this, like one, two, three, where we're incrementing by one, you could have Excel handle the rest by just clicking and dragging to kind of highlight all these cells. And then if you look at this green box, we can then put our mouse over it and it shows a crosshair. And we're gonna click on that crosshair and drag it down to let's say 29, and it will fill out one to 29, right? Additionally, we could have uh, do different sequences. So if you wanna just do odd numbers of like one, three, five, oops, one, three, and five, we could then highlight one, three, five, click on, put the mouse over the crosshair, drag it down. And now you see that, well, we just do increments of odd numbers, right? So it's doing every other number, one, three, five, seven, nine, so on and so forth. If you only do it with one number, let's say just one, and you click and drag, it will just repeat that number down. Um, there might be cases in which you want to put all the numbers as the same. This is how you would do it. You can also do this with Word. So if you want to just type in, um, for instance, Word, and I want the word Word to kind of duplicate, I can do the same thing. Word, drag it down. Everything now is the Word. Wonderful. So that's how things you can kind of speed up some of the data process. Another thing we're, we're going to be doing a lot in this is we're going to be using a function called RAND. Um, RAND just means random. And there's different types of RAND that there are. Um, Excel allows you to do that. So let me show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to click on a cell. I'm going to click on cell H. So H1's highlighted. I'm going to click on the function right up here. And I'm going to press the equal sign. The equal sign starts the function, right? We're basically saying this is going to be inputting an equation of some sort into Excel. And then from now, we can then start typing in a number or typing in our function, so to speak. So I'm going to type in R-A-N-D, um, which is the shortened uh, word for RAND, for random, right? We get RAND to random. And we have three options. Uh, you could mouse over and click on each one to kind of read what each one does. Uh, there's a nice little help tip. Uh, RAND, the first one, just gonna generate the number from one, from zero to one and just give you a decimal point. We're gonna be using that later, but for now we're just gonna skip it. Next one's RAND array. RAND array allows you to create an array or a set of columns and rows that has random numbers in them. We're going to skip that for now as um, there's some parameters in there that I just want to go over on discussing that in the advanced formula section. So we're going to skip that one. And then the last one that we're going to be using a lot today is called ran between. It means we're going to take numbers between um, a low to a high and we're just generate those or from a floor to a ceiling. Uh, if I were to double click on this to select it, you see they're using the words bottom to top. Um, so whichever words you want to use to describe it, I'm just going to call it a floor to a ceiling to kind of get that spatial awareness going. So I'm going to say from the number one, right? We want the floor one comma 100. Because notice this is bottom comma top. The comma is going to space the different um, the different parameters we're setting. So if I say one comma 100, it means any number between one to 100. And then I could end that parenthesis and press enter. And here I'll get the number 15. Uh, 15 is in fact less than 100 and greater than one, so it works. And just like how we did with Word and for one, if I click on the cell, put my mouse over that box with the crosshair and drag it down, we will get a whole list of numbers. Um, so with this whole list of numbers, I could keep on rolling. 
but there's something to kind of remember in this area. Um, since this is a formula and it's not an inputted number, this formula is going to recalculate. Now, what do I mean by recalculate? It means that these numbers will always change because of it will run this equation. So as you see here, if I click in and press enter, and well, click here, click on the formula and just press enter, it's going to recalculate all this. Additionally, an easy way of doing this is clicking on the formulas tab up on the top. And then you have all these different options. So you have calculate workbook, which will automatically calculate things. You have calculation options set to automatic. Basically, anytime I add data into this, it's going to recalculate to kind of keep it up to date. Um, you could change that to manual if you want to keep it static. But for now, I want to show you automatic just to kind of explain some things a bit in a bit. The last one is show formulas. If you click on show formulas, it will show you instead of the number or the input, it's going to show you this ray in between. I'm just going to click here twice. Oh, I'm going to click and drag then to kind of open all this up. And we can see that this is all the formula. Um, it doesn't give us the results of the formula, it just gives us the formula itself. So if we have a ton of uh, formulas on our sheet and we just want to make sure where each one is, we could click on formulas, click on show formulas, and we could see it. If you just want to see the results, we could click on that again, and we just got these plain numbers. And I'm going to click on calculate workbook, and you could see as I click on it, it's going to randomize those numbers. And this kind of brings us to one of the first things that kind of get beginner people kind of confused on sometimes, especially when they have these functions. Let's say I want to copy these numbers and I want to put it somewhere. I would either right click and copy or press control C to copy, or if you're on Mac, command C to copy. And then I just want to paste it here on L1. So I could either hit command B to paste, control V for Mac to paste, or right click and just paste. And notice we have a couple of paste options here. Uh, the first two, we're just going to look at these first two, really. Um, the first one is paste. That means anything that I've copied, I'm just going to paste right over. What do I mean? I'm going to just paste that. Um, and if we go back to formulas and show formulas, you see that I didn't actually paste or I didn't actually copy over the numbers. I just actually copied the formula and pasted the formula. So if I hit calculate workbook, now I have two rows calculating random numbers. Um, that doesn't help if I want to kind of maintain these numbers. So what I could do is I could highlight them all, hit copy, and I'm going to go put this on P, P1, right click, and I'm going to mouse over to it says values and click on values. And now I'm just going to copy those values. And if I calculate the worksheet, you see that those values are now static because I actually pasted the numbers themselves and not the formula. Um, so it works that way. Another way, if you're using the keyboard, I'm going to copy L. All right, I'm going to copy this. And if I'm pasting it here, hitting Command V because I'm on a Mac, you notice on the bottom here, Notice on the bottom here, there is a little control button. If you were to click on that, you can see that you have those symbols too. You have paste and you have paste values. And you can just change it over to paste values. And now it will just paste the values. So once I recalculate, these numbers are now static and we're good to go. So. That's that. Um, the next thing I want to go over is some basic calculations we may have. Most of them are going to be your sums and your averages. There are two ways to do this. Um, number one, if you just want to quickly look at things, you could highlight the series of numbers that you're looking for. And if you were to look right here on the bottom, uh, on this very bottom over here, um, you have your average, your count, and your sum kind of automatically displayed. And if you click on the down arrow, 
you could then kind of change what you want to customize it to if you want to add more things. Let's say that instead of having it kind of giving you this quick access, which is nice, you want to make a permanent cell that kind of has that going on so you permanently see some in average. What you could do is you could click on the cell below all the numbers you have. And then you would want to mouse over to the symbol over here to do auto sum. So this is the auto sum button. So if I click on that, it will highlight all of this in blue. It'll highlight all of this saying it's going to take all these numbers and get the sum. And if we look in the function, right, either here or here, I'm just going to go back up to the top. See the function, we see equal because it's a function. Sum is the sum command right there. And it says p1 dot dot p29. What that means is it's going to do the calculation of sum from p1 to p29. So you could think of this as the go to or from and to if you want to translate that to English. And then I'm just going to press enter and I'll get that sum. Um, additionally, let's say that we have our cells here and I want a section off the side that says sum and average. Um, I could click on the box here and hit sum. And notice we'll see number one, number two, right? It tells you the help tip there. What I could do is I could then click and drag. I notice how I get the P1 to P29 again, and then I press enter, and now we see that we have the sum. Additionally, I could do that on this row too. So if I want to call this one row one or R1 for row one and R2 for row two, right? Our column, yeah, we're just going to keep that. So R1 would be this column, R2 would be this column. So I could then just press equal or click on the auto sum button, why not? So auto sum, I can drag, right? We're doing S now. So S1 to S29, enter. Now we have those two sums. Um, we could also do this for averages by clicking on the down arrow next to the sum icon. Click on average and do the same thing. Click and drag, enter. The average is 46. And I'm gonna do it over here. Get the average of this column, and we see it's 50, All right? So that way we can do really good, quick calculations real fast on the fly. Um, so knowing all of this, we're going to move on to a good practice demonstration. So I'm going to click on that plus arrow to get a new sheet. I'm going to call this sheet INV for, for inventory. And here we're going to make a, a sheet in which we're going to talk about different items. So this sheet's going to describe an inventory of a business, let's say. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of create our columns to say what we what we wish to describe the entities with. So if you think about a store, um, stores have items, and their items are basically going to be using a barcode or a SKU. So I'm going to just put down a SKU for that. Basically, SKU is your what is known as your primary key or your, um, your primary identifier. So the SKU is only going to be related to one item or one entity. Uh, it's not going to be duplicated. So that way, you can always trace back all the data back to that SKU and all the things we're kind of collecting about it. So what things would I want to collect about each item I have? Well, I probably want to know the amount or how many things I have of that. So I want to collect the amount of them. Next thing I want to do is I want to collect the MSRP of them, um, how much they cost from the factory. Next, and then I want to kind of collect the price, how much I'm going to charge um, each item. The next thing I want to do is the percent percent of stock. 
basically how many items that I have that I could that I'm holding. So if I'm only holding like 10% of stock, it may tell me something. And what we're going to be using for that percent of stock is to tell us if we should order or not. Right. So if there's a low amount of stock, we should probably order. If there's a high amount of stock, we don't need to order at the moment. And then finally, um, I just have a two more rows. The first row is just going to be um, called a total cost to purchase. Basically, how much money we have spent to purchase the amount of things by their MSRP. And then finally, we're going to say potential profits, let's say. So basically, oh, I put an equal sign. So if you put an equal sign and call it a function, when it's not a function, you get this thing called name, question mark, meaning like, I don't know what this is. Like, this isn't a function. I don't know the name of this. Um, so if you get the error, that's what that means. So I'm just going to delete that equal sign, press enter, and now it is a word. Um, so I'm going to kind of auto fit all of this stuff. Um, so I'm going to click and drag, auto fit there, auto fit there, wonderful. So let us start with our SKU. So SKUs are going to be a, a, a number, a very large number. So I'm just going to write a random between, so ran between. And I'm going to put the, the numbers between 100,000 and a million. You got to get that large number. And I'm just going to scroll it down to 20 and then just quickly check real fast to see if they're all unique and they are. And remember how all these are just kind of the equation themselves, they're not all numbers yet. So I could just highlight all this, Command C to copy or Control C to copy. And then I'm going to paste as values. So I can kind of keep these numbers permanent. So I have my SKU now. The amount, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a equal ran between. Oops, ran between. I hit enter instead of double clicking. That's kind of what happened there. So you want to make sure you double click. And we're going between the price. Uh, we're going for the amount one to 100. I can either have one stock or 100. And here I have 100, which is cool. I'm going to recalculate. Get all this, make sure to copy and paste as values. So I keep that static. MSRP, I'm going to do that again, another RAM between, and it's going to be between 25 to 150, right? It either costs $25 or 120, $150. I could then click and drag and get all those numbers. If you want, you could actually make this a currency to kind of keep things kind of clear. Um, remember right over here where it says general for number formats, you could go to currency and you get dollar amounts if you wish. Now your price, the price is gonna be based off your MSRP. Um, and remember right now we still have RAM between. So let's make sure we highlight all this, copy it, paste as values. So Everything doesn't keep moving. So your price is going to be basically going to be around just taking your MSRP, multiplying by 30 to get 30%, and then selling that. So that way you have a 30% profit or you have 30% more money coming in for each item you sell. Um, that's common practice to kind of roll with. So I'm going to just hit equal, click on the MSRP going to multiply that by 0.30 or 0.3, or 0.30 and press enter. And we can see that 30%, so 30% of 130 is gonna be 39. Um, so I have this 
percent, but I want to make sure that the price I have also includes this number added onto the MSRP. So I have just the one price to look at. So if you remember from math class, uh, you would have to put parentheses around here. If you remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So order of operations, we're going to put this in parentheses to tell the computer, hey, do this first, calculate the percent and then add on top of that percent the MSRP. So I'm going to click on that box again, and we can see that we take the MSRP, multiply it by 3, by 0.3, to get the 30%, and then add the 30% back onto the MSRP to get the price we're charging per item. So I'm going to press Enter, and here we go. And then I could click on that and drag it down, and now all of this is filled out. So this is the price of everything. Now, percent in stock, uh, this is going to be a made up number. And to kind of make sure that I get percentages, I need to randomize and get decimals. So I'm going to use RAND because RAND is between zero and one. So all the numbers are decimal. And then I'm just going to close parentheses that, press enter. And now I have a list of random um, decimals. So I got to make sure I copy this and I paste it as value. And I want to turn this into a percent so I can visually see percent. So I'm going to click on general, the number format here, change it over to percentage. And here I now have my percentage. Now we have this thing called order. Um, what we could do is we could actually set up Excel to kind of give us some prompts based off some data. It's called a conditional. Um, and here we're gonna be using a conditional statement called an if statement. So because this is a function, we're gonna start with by clicking on F2. We're gonna press equal sign. And we're gonna type in if, right? And you can see that if is highlighted, it's a function we can use and it checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if it's true and returns another value if it's false. So I'm going to click on if and we're here and we're here. So I want to test to see if there is less than 30% of things we own that is in stock. I want to be able to take that and tell me if I should order it or not because just to kind of make things a little bit faster, easier on the human eyes to kind of make sense of all these numbers. So I'm gonna say if cell E2, or where the percentage of stock is, is going to be less than 0.3, right? Less than 0.30, comma, because I wanna move over to the next thing, because the logic test I'm testing is if it's less than 30%. So if it is less than 30%, I want to see a, I want to see the words order now appear. Now, when it comes to this, uh, we have to tell the computer that if I want to display a sentence or a, a list of words or a list of letters together, um, we have to format it as what's known as a string. And a string is just that. It's just a string of characters all put together in one thing. And that's denoted with quotations. So imagine if it's like a book character saying something, they could be talking in strings if you want to think of it that way. So if the book character is saying order now, we would say quotation order now, because if it is less than 30%, we want us to be told to be ordered now. Then we'll get a comma. And if it's false, we could just type in order later. So make sure that there is some quotes behind that and then end the parenthesis and press enter. And you can see here that since there is 17.94, that is less than 30, it will tell me to order now. And if I click on this and drag down and let go, you can see that there are some order nows and order laters, and it's all mixed in here. Um, this is really cool and really easy, but we can make this a little bit easier on the eyes. And to do so, we want to do something called conditional formatting, which can be found here. So conditional formatting will look at the cells. And depending on the cells and how we program it, it will show us certain things. So if I click on conditional formatting, I could highlight cell rules, meaning I could highlight the 
that I can tell the computer, hey, if there are certain things that are greater than or less than, you could highlight them by different colors. Um, today, I'm gonna to use text that contains. Uh, the reason I wanna do that is I wanna highlight anything that tells me to order now to have a visible showing that's red. So I'm gonna click on text that contains. And if you look at these options, it's either order now or order later. Um, they both have the word order in it, so that's not unique, but what is unique is the word now and later. So anything that I wanna order now, I wanna make sure that wherever the cell has the word now in it, it should light up in red. So I'm gonna type in now into the box. And then it says light fill, light red fill with dark red text. That's what I want, hit okay. And now all of our order nows are highlighted in red. I can do the same thing. Click on conditional formatting, like cell rules, go to text that contains, and then put later, because maybe I want to have anything that's later, I just want to fill with green text, um, green fill with dark green text. So this way I can visually see, oh, this is really nice. I could make out what I need to order now and what I could order later. Additionally, with this conditioning, you can make things sometimes easier on the eyes, like for instance, with percentages. So sometimes 17.94% visually is kind of hard to kind of imagine. So what we actually do is we could set these cells to kind of show us what that looks like. So we could highlight all these cells, click on conditional formatting, go to data bars and just pick your favorite color. I'm going with blue since it's the first one there. And then as you can see, you have a nice visualization of what 17.94 looks like, what 10.63, what 81.50 looks like, right? It all allows us to kind of make a little bit more sense of what these numbers are. Um, so it'll help us make better decisions. So now that we have the conditional formatting all set aside, um, let's do, G, which is the total cost of purchase. Um, total cost of purchase is pretty simple. It's going to be the MSRP, what we times the amount. So from the from the distributor, we bought 53 units at $130 because that was the MSRP. Press enter. That was how much we we would cost to to purchase that. Um, and I could just drag it down and we can see this is how much it costs to buy every single thing. If I want to see the potential profits, basically we're going to take the, um, we're going to take the, how much we bought things by and subtract it by what we're selling. We're going to take what we're selling and then subtract it by the cost of purchase. We'll get how much money we're actually making per the sale of all, if we were to sell all the items, we could see what that is. So equal, because of the formula, um, we're going to open parentheses because we wanna make sure that we calculate the first thing, which is calculate the all the things if we were to sell it at the price we were asking. So if we sold 53 units at 169, and then we want to subtract that by the cost it took us to purchase, we would be able to get how much profit we get by selling each lot of things. Um, and that kind of gives us a good number. And I could easily just put a sum on the bottom to kind of say, hey, we were to sell all of our stock for some reason, we would get about $26,000 in profit to be used off these sales, all right? So here we go, we have a nice little table going on. And I'm just gonna delete that real fast for a second because if you notice, this isn't a table, at least Excel doesn't think this is a table. What this is, is just a grid of data. So if you wanna turn to a table, turn to something we could manipulate a little bit further, we'd have to format it as a table. So we're gonna highlight your whole slew of data. Click on the top up here where it says format as table. 
And we're going to select that. And here we have a bunch of display options. I'm just going to click on the first one. And then you'll get this. Um, you want to make sure that it's having the range you're looking at. So I have from A1 to H20. So from A1 to H20, that's perfect. And then you have this, my table has headers. What this means is if your first row contains words, then it has headers. Um, if it doesn't, if it just straight numbers, then you could just unclick that, unclick that. But for now, since we have headers, I'm just gonna hit okay. And now we can see that there is an additional icon showing up. Uh, there's this little drop arrow. This drop arrow allows us to filter our data even further. So I could click on the order, click on that, and I could click on filter. And here we see all the options, right? It could be either order now or order later. Um, I could just click on, let me just show everything that is that I have to order now. I could click on that, hit OK. And here we can see all of this is now everything we have to order. And then maybe I want to sort this by high to low. So the cheapest things to the bot to uh, the cheapest things to buy to the most expensive thing. So I'm going to click on MSRP, click on sort descending. Um, and here we see high to low. And if we want to flip that, we could do sort ascending and this would be the cheapest and this is the most expensive. Or we could just go by percentage of stock. Let's say we want to make sure that we buy the things that are going to go out, right? Versus things that have a little bit more time left. We can sort it that way. And if you ever wish to kind of remove this sort, you could just click back on that down arrow and hit, um, yeah. So I'm going to go back to order and then I could clear and it's here. And if I want to just take that off, I just click that again. Um, and you can just do that. And now it's just always sorted. Okay. And if you want, you can just go back to sorting that or whatever. You can sort it in many ways. Once things are sorted, you can just sort by something else. So that this was unique, which it is. You'll always sort by this, and we can kind of manipulate as we feel. Um, additionally, what we could do is I'm going to make another sheet because I want to make a sheet in which I'm going to send. Let's say I don't do the purchasing, I just do the calculation on what need a book be purchased. I could filter this by what needs to be ordered. I could copy all this by highlighting it all, hit Control C, go to this new sheet I made and call it um, order. And then I could paste this as values. And here, we could see um, that we have this little bit of numbers that we could then send to somebody so that way they could order it. And uh, we could send that over by you know, sharing the data. We could share this. Or we could go to file and we can go to print. And we could print that too. Additionally, in here, in the file, we could go to save as, and from here we could download a copy. So we could download this as an Excel document um, and then manipulate it and then we could re-upload it at a later date. So that kind of wraps up what you could do on the basic level of Excel Online uh, 365. So that's it for today. That's the basics. We went through a lot um, and I hope you learned some small little things that you may not have learned before. Uh, next class is gonna be the advanced formulas and we're gonna jump into that a little bit more aggressively by describing a lot more formulas that may be useful as well as some of their, their use cases like HLOOKUP is very useful, VLOOKUP's useful. Um, so I'll break that down, tell you what that means and uh, you could then play around with these unique um, functions to kind of help you create more understanding from data. 
So that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to email the South Brunswick Public Library's Information Desk at info at sbpl.info. And until the next class, I hope you all have a wonderful time and take care. Bye now.